Hello, everybody. Um, so we've gone through this already before. For some of you, it was a little more recent than others. So I figure we'll just go through this again. Um, there's just been some pictures that we've been missing and sometimes just a lack of information on the front end for us to design properly because we really want to be able to put these out the first time and for you guys to have not only the design that you're looking for and the customer's looking for, but something that we feel confident putting out and we know that can be installed rather than just trying to make them happy right up front. Um, so we're just going to go through this stuff. You, if you guys have seen it before, still just pay attention because, like I said, we'll be going through this with, like, a test or something. We just want to make sure that we are getting all the information we need and that we look professional and we get it all the first time. We're not going out there four or five times to try and get this stuff. Um, so, again, you guys have been getting this deliverable package. Um, and if you have or haven't, some of you haven't, some of you haven't, um, it gives you design notes things to just look at that and that you can talk about with the customer, whether it's a tree that needs to be removed or a satellite dish, anything that when we design this, we know we'll put inside of these design notes for you guys. And these can all be found under proposals. And this will only be done on cash deals. So you guys will be able to take a look at this. Um, you guys will be getting a rendering still with all of your PPAs and uh, lease deals. If you, and if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and ask because I'm going to kind of go through this quick because we don't want to take a whole few hours to do this. So we're going to get this done quick. Um, we'll go through this video real fast. This is just something that we had put together to show the proper site evaluation procedure. I always, when I did my site evaluations, I always like to just start at the front of the house or if it's a commercial deal, start at the front of the building, regardless of whether it's the north or the south. It's important that we get all the sides of the building so that we know what we're dealing with, whether it's shading issues or where the meter's at in location to the array. If we're putting a 25 kilowatt system on a huge commercial building and it can really go anywhere, well, then at that point we start to look at, well, where's the meter on this site? Where, where can we locate this the best so we don't have to move anything? We have minimal runs to the electrical room. Is the electrical room on the outside? Is it on the inside? There's a lot of questions with not only residential but commercial as well. Um, and I know at least out in Missouri there's a lot of re commercial that's going on. So start at the front of the house and just work your way around and make sure that you take good pictures because if you just get us a picture that's like zoomed in on the roof right here and we can't see everything that's going on, that picture doesn't really tell us that much. It, it, especially if there's nothing on the roof and it's just open and there's no vents. Um, it doesn't it doesn't tell us much just to give us zoomed in. So make sure that you're zoomed out. We get good pictures because where you guys are on site and you can just look and see this stuff, we can't. We're trying to figure it out based on the pictures that you provide and satellite images. So just remember that when you guys are taking these pictures that, that we're never out there. Um, I put this one in. Make sure that you get the side of the house because then we can come in and we can put a protractor or whatever and just look at it and get at least a pitch to know if it's a 612, 512. Getting pictures zoomed out like this so that we can see any trees that are around. Um, we can see here the, the neighbor's house. If this house had a gable that was coming out this way and it created shading, that'd be really good to know because that is definitely something that cannot be trimmed or moved. Um, and we'd like to keep our array as far away from that. So it's not always, there's not always going to be shading issues and there's not always going to be issues that are just on their property. You have to look all around and see, you know, look at the height of things. Look around and see if anything's sticking up that, that, show, that you think could cause shading and take a picture of that. And not just a zoomed in picture of it, get perspective of it so we can see where it sits. If we know that the tree is 25 feet tall and we also know that it's 15 feet away from the house, we can put that tree exactly where it is, the exact height of it, and we're going to get a lot better shading analysis, or at least we're going to understand whether we need a shading analysis or not. We're still going to need to go out and get a shading analysis if we need to, to get that number, but it's going to tell us, you know, if we can move our panels away and not get shading on them. So just work your way all the way around the house. Again, this is really important for us because it give, if you get zoomed out pictures like this, we can see where exactly vents are. The vent is right over the doorway because we're not having you guys go up there and get measurements 
So Owen and I are, you know, we're, we're learning as we go in ways that we can place this. And, and we've done pretty well so far with, with placing those vents in, in the approximate location of where they're at. And it's all based on the pictures that you guys take. Because with the 45 degree angle from the satellite image, we can't tell if it's PVC or a movable vent or not. It, it really depends on the pictures that you guys provide. When you guys go around the house, it also shows us where the meter's at. This is really important because so many times I sit down to do a construction document set and I spend an extra 15 minutes just trying to find where the meter's at. I shouldn't have to do that. Like we've talked about, maybe an overhead, you guys should provide an overhead and just circle where the meter's at. This makes it so much easier because whether it's a commercial deal and we're just trying to figure out where to put the array or it's a residential deal and I'm trying to figure out how to run the conduit, I need to know where the meter's at. It's really important. And then with that, where the meter's at, making sure that you get the entire wall around it. What's above it, all the way up to the roof? Is there is there a window there that I need to know about? Is there a deck that comes out here and I can't run through that? Um, are there windows to the sides of it? Ten feet on both sides at least. I say ten feet, but I mean, if you guys can give me as much as you can, because then we can get creative with it. And if you guys only give me a little bit of pictures, you're only going to get a little bit back. But if you if you guys want like the inverter in the garage, that's totally doable. Production meter and disconnect have to go next to the MDP. So I need to know what's around there, whether it's a gas meter, because we can't be within three feet of that. But we can start to get creative if you guys give me these pictures and we can run our conduit better and hide it better and compact things. But if all I get is a zoomed in picture of the MDP with three feet out here, then I can guarantee you that all I'm going to do is just stick everything right there. And that's normally what we would do because that's going to be the best case scenario. But, you know, if there's a garage on the other side, we can run our conduit inside and put it in the garage. There's a lot that we can do. And sometimes HOAs require that. And so we don't want to have to go back out to get more pictures because the HOA is now requiring that. We should already have that. So if they come back and say all conduit has to be ran inside, well, I can just know that we're going to have pictures of inside that garage so I know what we can do. So then we'll just finish it off and it will go around and it will continue to all four sides. And this is important because if we were to max out the back roof there, and you guys still needed more panels, we now know what's on this east facing, what's on the west facing side. We know if there's vents there that we can use. We know we can put panels there. You guys don't have to go back out again and tell the customer, oh, well, we're trying to fit more, so we wanted to see what's over on this roof. Well, no, we already have those pictures, so let's just put them there, and we can go back out. No need, no need to go back out for another side evaluation. So that's that video. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, just, just call her because I'll answer them. So we'll just go through this really quick because I know everybody has seen it. If you guys bring us jobs like this where there's a house and there's shading everywhere, note that in Solar Advantages up front with that there's trees there. If you haven't been out on site, Get a hold of the customer and ask them, hey, we're looking at your site right now trying to design this system, and we notice there's an evergreen there. Are you willing to get rid of that? An evergreen can't be trimmed. So it's either got to go or this one just won't work. And so it's a, these are neighbor's trees. The neighbors aren't going to cut down their, so, their trees. There are huge trees back there for them to get some solar. And then you also got to look at this roof. It, this one in particular, it's really chopped up. So even if they did get rid of that tree, you're still only going to be able to fit, you know, four or five panels here, three here, a couple over on the west side. It's really chopped up. It's not going to look good. The customer is going to come back and say, well, can we compress it? The only way to compress it is to put it in shade. So it's just important that you, we, we look at that kind of stuff up front so that you guys aren't wasting your time. And it's not that you're wasting our time in any way. It's just that we're going to come back to you guys and say, hey, this one's what do you guys want us to do here? So so just think about that kind of stuff up front. Here's another one. Um, the overhead of it was to put solar here and here. But if you just were to look at the 45, 
you would know that that's really not an option and you don't want to be the sales guy who's out selling that kind of a system. Go to the neighbor's house over here. Tell them about the referral program. There's a bunch of the people across the street here don't really have any shading that they have to worry about. You know, there, there's a lot of options, but for this person, solar just isn't the way to go. The cost of removing those trees for the number of panels that you're going to be able to put, it just wouldn't be worth it. This one here is a, this is a good house for solar. They are sitting inside of a little opening here, a clearance, and yes, there's trees everywhere, but there's trees in the world, so we know that we have to deal with that. But when if you guys could tell us, you know, this tree over here is 65 feet tall, and this is a two-story house with a 30-foot or a 30-degree pitch, then we can place all that in and actually have it in the right place, rather than guessing where this tree is at and guessing its height. We can actually go in there and be precise about what we're doing and give you guys a more accurate rendering and, and be more confident with what we're doing. Because we could still utilize all this space here if the customer was willing and you had talked to them a ground mount. You know, it, it's, it's just all this kind of stuff that we've got to look at. Um, this was just for making sure that we know where the meter's at. Um, for this one, there's nowhere to tell where the meter's located. All these pictures are of the north side of the house. None of them are actually of the south, where we put the solar. And then in order to find where this meter was, this was the meter picture that I got. So this picture here is a good picture because I can tell, you know, we have 10 feet on each side. And I can move this little stick thing if we need to. But we have all this room over here that we can use and back feed right into there. But where is that meter at? Is it on the north side of the house, the south side? And... The only way I was able to figure it out is by looking at this satellite dish and working my way down to finding this piece of wood, which was this piece of wood, which is where the meter was at, and that took 15 or 20 minutes to figure that out. Now I can explain it very easily. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. This is Paul Rochelle. Uh, just a quick question. When we enter these into SA and we put the notes, we put these notes exactly, uh, you know, telling you northeast corner, north face, uh -huh. are the locations that can't be seen or anything like that. Is that helpful or do you, would you prefer pictures or both? I, am, I mean, preferably an overhead shot with it just circled. It, it makes it self-explanatory. You look at the picture and you can see the south-facing roof that we're going to use and you guys have circled where the meter is. And if there's a sub-panel or anything like that, we're not getting confused in the notes. You guys can circle. Here's the main distribution panel, but there's also a sub-panel and circle that inside of the garage, for instance, or whatever it may be. An overhead is really helpful because I'll pull up all these pictures, and a picture is, say, a thousand words. They, they tell me exactly what's going on there because when you guys tell me that it's on the north side of the house, well, there's still a whole north face. So unless I have a picture that says where on that north face it is, is it in the center? Is it to the northeast? Is it to the north? You know, it, it's just a lot easier if I just have an overhead that just circled where it was located. And, and preferably when you guys are doing that overhead and you're circling where that meter is, if you guys have talked to the customer and it's before the design and you know where, for instance, the ground mount is or if there's multiple areas where we can put a roof mount, circle that location. So then when Owen pulls it up, there is no questions and there is no him create, designing it one way when you guys wanted it another way. We've already taken care of that. And, and he'll always check the pictures. He'll always check the notes. But a picture just says a thousand words. If you just, if you just take that overhead, snip it with the snipping tool, and right inside there, there's a little pencil that you can grab and just circle it. Write your M inside there for where your meter is, your MDP. It, it's just it's it's self-explanatory. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. So we'll move down here, um, and I get this. This has happened several times. Um, this was the the picture that I got for the meter, and here's the MDP right back here, and that was my meter picture. So by looking at this. Yes, I can tell now that I have this room over here, and I can see a great shot above it, but what's below it? Do I have a gas meter here? Is there like a little um, window well right down here that drops down? If I were to put an inverter here and they go out there, they're going to tell me, well, there's a 
three foot drop into a window well right there and that's where you want it to go so it just makes us look like we're just sending these out and hoping that they work we need to get those pictures so that if we're putting two power ones and it's a cash deal we need to make sure that we have the room for that and and each piece of equipment has to be eight inches away from each other there's always going to be a production meter there's always going to be a disconnect and so you're at least a, you know two feet right there a foot and a half to two feet and then you start you know are we using end phase are we using SMA are we using power one how many of those string inverters are we using do we need an AC combiner box so there's a, so many components that can end up going in it it can be as simple as dropping down and hitting a disconnect and a production meter and back feeding your panel but other times it's not that simple and and that wall gets bigger and bigger and bigger and so we can't stack these things on top of each other there's some that we can but what I'm trying to say is that we can't have this just all compressed together and everything just stacked on top of each other to try and fit in a one foot spot I need you guys to get me these pictures of top to the ground left to right so I know what's going on if the main distribution panels on the corner of the house get me both sides get me this side of the house get me this side of the house so that I know what's going on so I know where we can put it if the MDP is right up against the other side is the garage if it's really easy for you guys to just have them open their garage and take a picture of that hey that might be the way to go maybe we can put it in the garage especially if the inverter or excuse me if the service is on the south facing wall because you don't want to put your inverter out on that south facing wall where it's going to be blasted by the sun all day it's it's going to overheat so we try and take into account all those things but when I don't have the pictures and I've asked you guys to go out there and oh we got the pictures and they're in SA well then that's what I'm gonna work with but if you guys want to sell your customers a great system that's gonna last for 20-25 years we want to design it that way and we need the pictures to do it we can't just do this all off of satellite imagery there's a lot that we can do with that and we've gotten really good at it but we are really dependent upon you guys being our boots on the ground and being out there and taking the pictures and getting us the information on site that we need because we're never going to be out there to do it so we rely heavily upon you guys so just making sure that, that when you get to this picture here find a way and I totally understand if you can't get in the backyard there's a Rottweiler back there and he's barking and <laughs> the name the the homeowners not home and this that and the other we may end up asking you to go back out there but do your best that first time to go out there and get all the pictures that we need and and if there's any questions about what exactly we need on the outside of the house I want all four sides of, of faces so that I know what's going on I want the roofs that we're going to use as best as you can I understand if you are in between these two houses there's not really going to be a way for you to get that roof but maybe stepping back to where this picture was taken and getting this perspective so I at least know there's a vent up there and that it looks pretty tall so I know that's not a little turtle vent that I'm dealing with instead it's a big metal stack that we can't move and then I can look at the overhead and do my best to place that so just getting us those pictures Amir in a little bit here is going to go over what exactly he wants inside of the panel so that you guys know when you go out there and you open that panel that you know exactly which pictures he's going to need when it's a contracted deal or even when he's trying to design it and he asks you to go out there to check something you'll know exactly what, what he's looking for and if you have questions again on any of that stuff feel free to ask myself if, I, if it's uh, doesn't have to do with electrical if it has to do with electro, electrical you can ask me if I don't know I'll find out from Amir right away and get you your answer back so just feel free to ask myself Amir Owen if you're talking to him we can all answer your questions and we just want to make sure that when you guys go out there to do these side evals, it's a one-stop shop and you get everything we need we're good to go when it's contracted it's it's good to go um, it's important that when you guys enter your information into solar advantages that you check to make sure that you're entering it incorrectly um, on this one you know West field and here it's written wheat field um, if it's a first name a last name we use those all that information on so many different documents and when it's different in different places or when it's different in one place it's going to show up wrong on everything and we're going to get called out for it whether it's by the utility company by our leasing partner um, 
by planning and zoning when we go out there and this address doesn't exist. And then that's all the paperwork that we've done. We now have to go back and edit. And it's, and it's just some, if we're trying to get into this pattern where a deal is contracted, we create the documents, it, gets, it goes right through planning and zoning. We want to get to where they just look at something that says syndicated and they know it's good to go. They don't want, we don't want to be where they see the word syndicated and they know, okay, this one needs to be reviewed because there might be something wrong with it. So just making sure that when you guys enter it in, that you guys just take an extra two minutes, just run through everything. When you put the address in or the phone number, just say it to yourself. 504-5408. You might have missed a number. You know, you never know. Just, just double check that stuff because all that information gets used. Um, when signing a contract, this is really important, and I catch a lot of this stuff because I'm the one who, who looks at the contract versus solar advantages in order to create those construction document sets. So it's really important on, those con on, on the contracts that we match what's in solar advantages. If something is wrong in solar advantages, make a note to Brett, myself, Seth, to whoever it, it is irrelevant that it's important to don't just cc betty on it or cc brett when he has nothing to do with it making a note saying hey i need you to change this or alan or whoever don't do that it's your job make sure if, if it's a spec that i wrote wrong tell me sam i noticed that you had a the, the tilt is 23 degrees and it's actually closer to 30 35 I'll take a look at that and I'll make those changes. But don't just go into your contract and put in that it's at a 30 degree tilt when all of our stuff in Solar Advantages was at 23 because you don't know what else could be wrong with there. You know, the the production could have changed. We could, it, you know, the number of modules that you went with might not string. There's a lot of things. So if you guys are looking at Solar Advantages and it's not matching what you were wanting on your contract, say something to somebody. Don't just do it and then have me catch it at the end because then I have to put your project on hold because if all these documents don't match to the T, it gets rejected by our leasing partner. I mean, they, they're all over that stuff. They're really good about catching every little thing. And, and it doesn't look good when, you know, it says a 23 degree tilt in, or excuse me, right here, it says 180 degree azimuth and a 90 degree azimuth. And then in solar advantages, it's 180, or 87 and 177. So then everything that goes through, it's only off by a little bit, but everything that we put through is wrong if we match solar advantages. And if we match the contract, then solar advantages is wrong. And what's the point in having all this stuff in solar advantages if it's wrong? So just make sure that if you guys notice anything is wrong, that you guys send us a note. If you guys reduce the number of panels or if we had designed a system that had 33 panels and you guys decided to sell it at 26, tell us that you sold it at 26 and it was at 33. So then we know that we're reducing panels. We're not looking at it as, oh, well, did we show them 22 panels and now they want 26? Or it was at 30 and just, just, Try and give us context. Make sure that you guys are working with us so that if something changed and it's not matching solar advantages, that we get it to match. It's, it's really important that that stuff all, all jives and it all works together. You guys have gotten really good about this one. I can basically take it out of here now. Um, just sending an email with an address on it is not okay. Um, don't just send it to Owen and say, what can we do here? How many can fit? We don't do that. We don't lick our thumb and say that 20 panels will fit there because then you guys will roll with that and you guys will say, well, the design team told us 20 panels will fit. We're going to design it. If you guys come to us and you ask us how many will fit, we're going to draw it up and we're going to do it right because you guys can guess just as well as we can, if not better, because you guys were out on site and you can see things that we can't and you can put it into perspective. I can tell you that it's really weird when I do my drawings on SketchUp and then I go out on site and I see it in real life. Because on SketchUp, on my computer, the whole thing can fit in my palm. But when you go out and you see it in real life and you see these panels are five feet by three feet, it puts it into perspective. So and you guys have gotten really good about that. You guys aren't really doing that. Everything has gone through solar advantages. 
when you guys are looking for it and you, you know that you want it, market is hot. Owen pulls his hot list every morning and usually, you know, sometimes in the afternoon, but he'll always pull it in the morning. So if there's a job that you know you want, have it in the night before because when he comes in at 8 a.m., he's going to pull his hot list and there's usually, you know, between five and ten leads on there. And so when you guys then come in at three o'clock in the afternoon and mark one hot and say that you want it, well, now all the reps that are on this phone call are being put on hold so that you can have your job go out. And so they're hoping that you close that one because you're now putting all their clients on hold. So just make sure that if you guys want a job, that you guys mark it as hot, Owen will pull his list and it will get done, whether I have to help him out and usually he gets it done. But if there's a list with 12 jobs that are hot, that's awesome. I'll, we'll get it done. But just make sure that you guys are getting it in the night before, that you're not marking it the day that you want it as hot because then he doesn't pull that list and you guys are wondering where it's at. Um, when you guys are looking at jobs, just make sure that you guys pull the address up beforehand. Pull it up right away. When you guys, when if Tracy sends you a lead that she got on a phone call, pull it up so that you know when you're going out there. And I might even, you know, you might be able to look at this and say, well, here the house doesn't even pull up. So how is Sam and Owen going to draw this? So you'd have to go to the assessor's website and provide us with something. We're not going to go on there and find it because we'd be doing that quite often. So we're going to leave that to you guys. That if, if you guys pull it up and it's missing, or if we pull it up and it's missing, like we've always done, we're going to make a note, this is missing. We either need you guys to check the assessor website. If it's not there, then you'll. if you guys want this design and you think it's going to close, you're going to need to go out to the site and get us measurements of the footprint. Just pull measurements of the house, tell us how far deep the soffit is, and then we can draw it up from there. Give us the orientation of the house. Um, it's just really important. And then by doing this, you can also look and say, hey, I'm about to go out to this house here. Well, look at these neighbors' house. Both of them are at 180 degrees with great roofs for solar, even this one over here across the street. So you can set yourself up with knowing that, hey, rather than going out there with 25 minutes and giving them a proposal, maybe I'll go out there with an hour because these neighbors are so great that I should give myself time to go talk to them and say, hey, I was just talking to this neighbor, and when I pulled these houses up on sat satellite imagery, I saw how great yours was, so I wanted to come talk to you. So just, you know, just make sure that you guys pull it up and that you see, A, does it, does it the A that, that shows up here, if that shows up in the middle of the street, I need you guys to circle which house it is, because I don't know if it's this house, if it's this one, if it's this house. If it, if it shows up and there's nothing there, I'm going to need you guys to provide the dimensions of the house for us. Um, so it's just really important. You can see then, like we ran into up here, if if there's trees that cover the entire house. So it's just, it's really important that you guys just take a minute when you guys see that you have a lead you're about to go out to and you've never met them, pull it up on Google and make sure that, that we'll be able to pull it up when we go to design it. And I won't go through all this. This is just some this just sums it all up. And just all I can really say is pictures, pictures, pictures. Truly. Just the more that you can provide us with pictures, the less questions that we're going to have for you because we'll be able to look at your pictures. So just as much as you can, guys can provide of those. <clears throat> um, you guys have all seen the construction document sets that we we create, so I won't really spend any time on this. Um, you know, our module layout, we pull all of our information. You guys look over here. This is the stuff that goes on here, the system size, the modules, the module count, the inverters, the inverter count. That is all stuff that we're going to decide, so so there's no information that we need for you, from you guys for that. But when it comes to electrical service, I'm either going to look for what you guys wrote in your electrical service on under site evaluation on solar advantages down here. And if it's not there, then I'm definitely going to check your pictures. And I'm going to check your pictures either way. When you guys write in there that it's a 200 amp, I want to be able to go to your pictures and see that the main distribution or the MDP switch in there is a 200 amp breaker. So that's, I look for that. I look to see, this comes from us, if it's a flush mount the type of flashing that we use, and that's dependent upon the jurisdiction that we're in. 
um, the type of roof that it is. I look on both your pictures and your site evaluation information to see what roof type is it. Is it a tile roof? Is it asphalt shingle? This is really important. This is very important up front when designing it. If it's a tile roof, know that there's going to be a two-foot inset. Um, I look for the roof age. This is important. This is really important. This is something that, that I don't always see filled out. If you go to site evaluation and structural, it's right here, roof age. I have no way of knowing what this, the age of these roofs are. You guys have to ask the customer, how, when was the last time your roof was re-roofed? Um, if they don't know, get pictures. Take, ask them to take their best guess. How long have you lived in the house? 15 years. Okay, well then let's go with that. And If it's 15 years, then you really want to check the integrity of the roof and make sure that putting solar on there that's going to be another 25 years, they're eventually going to need to get it re-roofed, in which case they're going to have to take the solar off, get it re-roofed, and it's just a big deal. So, so I always look for this, and it's really important. And if you guys don't put it in there, I'm going to put new because I'm not going to guess. I could guess five years. It could be ten years. It could be one year. So if it does, if it's not in there, I'm going to put new. And I know that in in most cases that's not the situation. But I'm not going to start guessing years because it's just it's all a guess. So that one's really important that you guys put that information in there. That roof age. The trusses, I checked that, 24 inches on center, that's typical. But if it's different, if there's a metal barn that you guys are, are wanting solar on, you need to get us pictures inside there so we know, are we dealing with 24 inch on center wood trusses? Are we dealing with four foot purlins that are running you know, east to west? Um, there's, there's so many different situations. This is an 18 inch on center truss. There's just so many different situations that if it's not a typical house, and, and I say a newer house even, then we need to know if, if it's 24, is it 18? Most of the time it's 24. So if it's anything different, I'm going to ask you guys to get me pictures. That it's 18 or whatever it is. If it's a metal barn that they built next to their house, and you're taking pictures and that's where they want the solar, it's really, really important that you get the inside so we know, is it, is it wood purlins, 24 inches? Is it metal trusses? Are they four foot? Are they two foot? Are they five foot? Because that all the, tells us the orientation of our modules and our racking and how we can lay it out on there. Because if there, there's, there's many different situations. So it's important that you guys get us that. Um, the tilt of the roof we put on there, and then the azimuth. We'll put, we get the interconnection from the one line that Amir provides. This is, all, this is for the, the installer when he goes out there. We also, this particular one doesn't have it on it, but this site for the safety plan it will also have dimensions on it so that they can go out now and get roof measurement verifications and by they I mean the installer. Um, we send this to them and they go out and they measure it up beforehand and they say yes this system will be installed exactly how you guys have it shown. If it doesn't then what they do is they make the edits to it of what will work. So if this panel didn't work because of a vent they would X that off and they'd move it to where it would work. And if they ended up having to move this to here then that would be something that we would bring up to you guys, unless it was less than, you know, 1% to 2%, in which case, you know, clean power finance wouldn't care, and if it was a cash deal, as long as our production was still good, it really wouldn't, wouldn't change too much. So we send the installer out with that information, they verify that it will all work. We get our Sinai information, and you guys are starting to realize that, you know, we need this for every job that, that is a lease. So if, it's, if you guys have a lease deal, you know that you're going to be asked to get a sun eye. And it may or may not change what you have shown the customer. If there's some shading out there and you guys are really trying to make this work for the customer and you put in that there's 98% shade in clean power finance, well, is that really safe to go with? Because when you get that sun eye, if it's not plus five or minus two, it's going to be rejected and you're going to have to go back out to that client. So it's really important that up front, you guys try and be as accurate as you can. And I understand that at the same time you have to make the numbers work. And so it's just important that 
that you guys take that into account. You guys pull up that address and look at how much shading there could be. If you if it's the winter time like right now, drive by the house at three o'clock if you want to know is there going to be shading. Drive by at three o'clock and look at it if you're right next to it. Is that whole roof shaded? Because if it is, then it's not a great spot for solar. If at three o'clock in November there's no shading on it, then that's a pretty good spot because you're going to have all year that you're not going to have shading there. And that's just something that you can do without having to go out and get a sign. You can just take a look at 3 o'clock, go there at 9 o'clock in the morning and take a look at what it looks like. <clears throat> this is what the inverter wall looks like. We've gone through that. Just make sure you guys provide those pictures so that I can draw this up. Give all of our racking and then our typical spec sheets. And then you guys have all seen this. This is just our, what we get back from our installers after it's been installed. And we check this compared to our documents. And if we have to provide an as-built for any changes, we do that then. We just make sure that everything looks clean and that it's installed right. And then, of course, you guys have, some of you at least, have seen these videos that we've created. Just taking the rendering, we've used these for, for different events and things like that. And sometimes we'll upload them to YouTube if the customer wants to see it. Um, we haven't done it for every customer by any means. It would be too complicated and too much work. But if there's a customer that really wants this kind of stuff, you know, let us know and we can find time to do it. And so that's basically everything that I wanted to go through. Um, does anybody have any questions as far as like taking pictures of the house? Um, any anything that has to do with site evaluation? Does anybody have any questions on that? Amir's about to go through what he wants to see inside of the main distribution panel, but anything other than that, do you guys have any questions? Okay, so I'm going to have Amir take this and he is going to go through some stuff real quick with you guys and then I think we're done. Let me Mir, where'd you send it? Right here. Alright, well thank you guys. Here's Amir. Hi guys, this is Amir. I will go through with some uh, pictures that are needed for the electrical evaluation. The first picture is the, we need the picture for the, the wall showing the meter and the main distribution panel, which is in this picture attached to the main meter, as you can see. This is called the load center for the house. And as you can see, they are all they are both attached to each other here in the wall. So the first picture should show both of them from this far. It's about 10, 10 feet is enough distance, I think. The second picture is showing what's inside this um, load center, which is the main breaker. As we can see, it's 125 amp. This small number here is showing the rating, the amps rating, which is needed for the design. And we'll see in the one line, just in a second, how can this help me in the design. This is a little like a closer picture for the panel. And I would like you guys to see, like, to take pictures for something like that from this distance, like three, maximum three feet from the panel. So we can read the 125 very clearly. And most panels, if you go to different houses, that will be 200 amps. So whenever you see like a, a very huge disconnect or breaker, and there is like 100, over 100 or 125, 150 or 200 amps breaker, we need to take pictures of that just to help us in the design. This is another picture. Sometimes the, this number, the 200, will be written on the side on the handle of the breaker. So it doesn't have to be here on the top. 
So we're missing a lot of uh, like jobs are putting on hold because of this number is missing. Please take pictures for the site as well. In some houses, we have uh, more than one panel. We have the main panel, which is on the meter for what uh, we saw in the first picture. And this is this picture is showing the sub-panel. Sub-panel means it's an, uh, another panel located somewhere in the house. It could be in the garage, in the basement, sometimes in the kitchen. So please go ahead and take pictures for all panels, for all electrical panels that you can see in the house. And as you can see here, we, we have a lot of empty spaces or openings in the panel and I'd like to see all of these but like this is a potential for an additional breakers that we can install for backfeeding the photovoltaic system. This picture is showing the whole panel, the main breaker with the other breakers as well. And as you can see here the, the number is, is I can't tell if it's 100 or 200 or 300. So please try to take picture for the, this number as well as the whole panel. And as you can see here, we can read that this breaker belongs to the AC unit. This breaker belongs to the bedroom and vice versa. So please try to take as many pictures as you could just to make sure that we don't send you back to the house and take another pictures because most of the times we need pictures for everything. This is another good example for a picture of the panel and we can read everything in the level here, hot tub, we can read the range and AC, dryer, so please try, try to uh, like make your resolution very high. This is a very bad example for a sticker of the panel. So we can't read anything in this panel, so if we try to zoom in, can we zoom in this picture here? Yeah, go back and just do control and circle. No, doesn't work. So, so anyways, please try to to make your resolution high. Attached to the door of the panel, most of the times we have a sticker. Sometimes it will be missing, but most of the times you will find it. So please try to take pictures. And this is the number that we're looking at in the panel, which is it says the main rating. It's a 200 amp maximum. This is the how many amps we can withdraw from this panel. So it will be written sometimes on the left side, sometimes at the top. So please try to take pictures for everything in the panel and try to label it. Like for example, this is the picture of the sticker of the main panel or panel one or sub panel. Just try to make sure that we, we can follow the order of the picture. So why do we need all of these pictures? Because uh, uh, my part is to design the one line diagram which, which means the electrical connection between the solar panels, the inverter, and the, all the protection devices going all the way back to the meter, the production meter, which is the additional meter that we install before the main panel. And then this is what's called the, the load center, or what we saw in the first, very first picture. If you go to the first picture, this picture here. This meter with the main panel, is what you see here in the one line. This is the meter and this is the main panel. So what I do is I do some calculation with the math for the using the numbers that we got from the pictures to zoom in a little bit in this uh, part of the one line. As you can see here, it's a it's a 200 amp panel. I got this number from this label here, the sticker of the main panel. It's a 200 amp, so I can use it here. And this number here, the second number, is for the main breaker, which is the very the first breaker after the meter. And I got this number, this 200, I got it from this picture. It's a 200 amp. So I do some calculation that you guys don't have to go through it, but without these two numbers, I will not be able to do, to do any like calculation and to draw one, my one line so we put the project on hold till you guys go back to the site and take another picture so please try to take as many pictures as you could and this is about all 
what we need from the electrical like evaluation. Do you guys have any question? No. No. Good, because there's going to be a test on this. Uh, I hope everyone was paying close attention. Okay, and then I have one thing that I did leave out on my site evaluation procedure, um, and this is just for ground mounts. And we've been running into this with uh, Schleder, which is who we use to get our ground mounts from. We need to know the the grade of the ground. What which way is it sloping, and at how much? Um, whether you guys get an app on your phone for an inclinometer, there's plenty of free ones out there. If you use an inclinometer, if you take a piece of string out there and you give me the rise and run, whatever the deal is, I need to know what that angle of the ground is and which way it's sloping. Because that's going to tell us the, the length of our poles, how far they need to go into the ground, and some of them are, are going to need to be longer than others so that we can make sure that the ground mount is square. It has to be level, and it can't angle with the ground as well. So that was the last thing I wanted to add, that if you guys are going to give us, a, if you guys are wanting a ground mount, not only do you guys provide the overhead, snip it, and circle where you want that ground mount, that's going to basically be required for ground mounts because we're running into so many situations where the ground mount location changes. And even when you guys upload that drawing and you guys go out and you show the customer, it could change again, in which case we need to make sure that we always have that up-to-date location so that when it goes from being a hot lead to a contracted job and we have four renderings in four different places, I need to know where is this ground mount going. Whether you guys put it in a note or you guys circle it in a picture, I need to know that information, where it's going, which is the ground sloping, which way, and then pictures of that ground. Is it just soil? Are there boulders out there? Is there a bunch of grass that's five feet high? All this stuff we need to know, and that's just for ground mounts, and I, just, I, I haven't really ever touched that much on ground mounts, but lately we've been selling a few of them. And, and so that's really important that if it's a ground mount, you guys give us the location and which way the ground is sloping and at what angle. And whether that comes from, like I said, a free inclinometer app, if you take an inclinometer out there or if you give me the rise and the run, that's fine. Just give me the direction that it's going and an overhead of where the, where the array is going to go. And that's it. I just wanted to go over that stuff with you guys. It's been a little while. Everybody's doing really good, and so I just wanted to... Uh, to just touch base with everybody and see if anybody had any questions or anything like that. And so we're really trying to get to where we have all the pictures and we don't even need to look at a, the site evaluation information except for the little things that can't be answered by a picture like the roof age and things like that. Um, these pictures, they tell us so much. So it's just important that when you guys go out there, and I understand that you don't always go out on the front end, but when you do go out there and you present this, get pictures. Don't leave yourself just enough time at night to give this presentation. Find a way to get pictures, whether it's that you went out there at 6 o'clock and you gave them this presentation. Tell them you're going to come back tomorrow morning and can you keep your dog inside. I'm going to take some pictures so that we can more accurately render this. I don't know how a customer could be okay with accepting a design if you guys have never even been out there to take pictures before. Um, it's just important that you guys that you guys get us that information. And again, if you have any any questions at all, call myself, call Owen. We're always here for you guys. Um, if you guys have design questions, if you guys have design ideas, make notes in Solar Advantages. Feel free to call us, but always make a note so that we can go back and check Solar Advantages, and we don't have to try and remember something from last week because I don't even remember stuff from yesterday. Sometimes, depending on how busy it is. So just make a note in Solar Advantages. Don't leave it to other people to make notes in Solar Advantages. You do it for your client, and you see your client all the way through to the end. And I'll see it through to the end on my part. Brett will see it through to the end on his part. We all have to do our parts. So just if you guys have questions, come to us. Anything like that, comments, um, drop it in the suggestion box. Thanks, guys.